if you are new here and simply couldn't resist the AITA poll in the caption. Uh, hi, my name is Jamie Wolfer. I'm your online wedding planner. And every once in a while, I like to do these videos. Um, one, because they're entertaining as heck. All right. And that introduces me to you, a brand new audience. Hello. Thank you for being here. Um, and two, I think it's important as a wedding planning professional, I deal with a lot of similar stuff to this to kind of help diffuse these situations and walk you through them. So maybe, maybe if you have something similar to this, you can navigate it a little bit more gracefully, given the etiquette and the unspoken rules of wedding planning, whatever that's supposed to mean to help you just figure this out a little bit easier because my goal is to help you plan easily and stress less. But if you get nothing other than entertainment out of these videos, that is fine by me. Today's video is going to be all about siblings. If you are an only child, then you might not know this struggle, but siblings are a lot. <laughs> They're a lot uh, in a great way and also not a great way. So going by titles alone, I have found three different AITA wedding Reddit threads for us to go through together and dissect with Zim and Vigor. Maybe a little bit of vinegar. Okay, so am I the a-hole for canceling my brother's wedding? They're blissfully happy, blah, 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 blah. Ella was mean to me a lot. Oh, like a lot. She would make comments about my weight, my makeup, and especially my dog. She hated animals and hated that I would bring my lab, Toast, to my parents' or my brother's house. I love that you named your lab Toast. <laughs> Uh, it always just felt like something aimed to hurt me. When the two got engaged, she asked me to be her maid of honor. Since she has no sisters or many girlfriends, I wonder why. And since my brother seemed thrilled, I obliged. What I failed to realize when I accepted the role was that her maid of honor meant planning the entire wedding. Like I was booking venues, florists, jazz band, everything. Even where she expected me to put my credit card down for all of it. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, and just for the record, the vote this is the OP is not the a-hole, okay? Which so far, it, that tracks. Oh, <sighs> my brother and her are not exactly well off and since I have a well-paying job, I don't mind holding deposits, but it was starting to add up a lot. Yes, wedding planning can be expensive, especially when you have someone who's not paying for it, making all the decisions because <laughs> they're not seeing the money leave their account. Every time I asked Ella about it, she would say that it would all be paid back by her parents before the wedding. Red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. Well, flash forward the last week, about three weeks before the wedding, and she's unbearable to be around. She can't last more than a few sentences before snapping at anyone. So when I, of course, brought up the money, stuff hit the fan. I asked if she had received the updated receipt of everything owed when she exploded. She called me a whole line of terrible names, but the one that stuck out was her saying, what do you need the money for anyway? Your sick dog is dead now. My beautiful Toasty died a month before this, after he fought the bravest battle with cancer. He was my soul dog and I was devastated. I lost my soul dog November of 2021 and it still hurts and I never understood why people would get their animals tattooed on their bodies until I lost this dog and I was like, oh, <laughs> I get it. Like that makes me sad reading this and I have three other dogs. Like we have so many animals here, but that was my dog. So to read this, I'm like, that is soul crushing. And that's so highly inappropriate. I blinked at her and simply left room, having no energy to even respond to something so cruel. I went back to my car and after the 20 silent minute drive home, I parked and immediately called the vendors and canceled any deposit under my card. Every single one. After almost 20 calls, all that was left of her wedding was the dress and the flower arch. I texted my brother a short explanation. I told him that every vendor would be contacting him if they wished to keep their services and they were now responsible for covering everything and that I would no longer be attending. It was a matter of minutes before my phone started to explode and I just turned it off. It's been a few days and I haven't talked to anyone but my mom who thankfully understands where I was coming from. My brother has tried to call but I just feel terrible, both what I did and about what she said. I know what I did was extreme but I also couldn't sit by and practically enable her cruelty anymore. I still can't help feeling bad for ruining my brother's big day, so I don't know. Am I the a-hole for this? The thread's now locked due to excessive violations, so if that tells you anything. <laughs> I'm going to give you my reaction to this first before reading into any of the comments down below. This is a really, really yucky situation. This could have been prevented a lot better had boundaries been put in place earlier. There's something about wedding planning that brings emotions and expectations out of the woodwork. And if you were in this, then you know this wholeheartedly. You know this firsthand. Uh, I did a video called The Dark Side of Wedding Planning. I'm going to go ahead and link it right here if you do want to go take a look at that. But there's all of a sudden this pressure from society, from family, from friends. They all have expectations for what your wedding day is going to look like. Um, so it, it can be a lot. And coming from this person who's a sibling, who's an outsider, I can understand her desire to want to feel helpful and to pitch in and help out. I also kind of understand that, you know, money makes relationships icky sometimes. Dave Ramsley, love him or hate him. 
when you borrow money from someone, it makes you a slave to the lender. So when it's your family member, it makes Thanksgiving a little bit, a, a lot more awkward, right? So I think that this could have been prevented a lot better had there been more boundaries earlier on. But, you know, what happened happened. There's no changing that. We can't go back and say retroactively, I'm going to place boundaries down, right? But when she did decide to place the boundaries, she simply said, nope, if you want to carry on, you can pay for this. I'm removing my credit cards from any sort of deposit. I'm shocked that she was able to get deposits back. Um, most vendors don't work like that. So I found that part pretty interesting. I think the OP was really trying to just be a loving sister and didn't know how to set up boundaries to make sure that she was still feeling respected and comfortable in the situation um, until it got too far and she decided to say, nope, I'm done. I think she was well within her rights to say that. I think she was well within her rights to do that. I don't think she technically canceled the wedding. Uh, I think it was just a matter of, hey, if you want to hold on to this, go for it. Like, if she sent over the contracts, if she sent over the contact information, great. The wedding's not canceled. She didn't cancel the wedding. But it sounds like the fiancé is deeply insecure. Deeply insecure. Um, and was looking for somebody to pick on. And I think that that is wildly unfair. And so if that is the boundary that you choose to set, to not pay thousands of dollars for someone else's event, or not be beholden to paying thousands of dollars for someone else's event, I think you're well within your rights to do that. Now, I'd like to think that maybe this person will have better boundaries moving forward, but that's on them. Hopefully this will be a lesson for them and they won't get themselves into this situation again. Not the a-hole. They were never going to pay you back. It's a good thing she showed how wicked she was before you got stuck with the bill. I'm so sorry about your loss. Don't let anyone make you feel bad about what you did. They shouldn't be getting married if they don't have the money. If her parents were going to pay, they could put down their card for deposits. When you give family money, don't expect to get it back. Very true. They would never pay it back. They are so entitled and it's beyond belief. Well, from what we can see on our end, right? Also, an easy way to see a person's true colors is to watch out for their response slash treatment to animals. Her hate for animals and the nasty comments on OP's dog reveals how terrible she inherently is. Now, I think it's okay for people to not like animals. I personally don't understand that. <laughs> we have a lot. Uh, we have quite a few cats. Multiple dogs, like I said, horses, chickens, goats. We, we've got a little mini hobby farm here. So I don't understand not liking animals, but I think people are allowed to do that. But if someone was talking nasty about my animals, I'd be like, dude, just don't say anything. Like, just keep your mouth. I'm not forcing you to like goats or chickens, okay? But like, you don't need to talk like that, especially when you can tell I'm clearly passionate about it, right? Not the a-hole. Not even a little. First, a maid of honor duties do not include planning the whole wedding, and they certainly do not put down all the deposits and pay for the wedding. Exactly. You were a free wedding planner. You were planning their entire wedding for free. You were basically her minion, her slave, and her checkbook in all of this. That's a spicy take, but also it's not inaccurate, right? This is not what a maid of honor does. And if you're in a situation like this and you're a maid of honor and this is being expected of you, you can point them to this video. Not just slightly passive aggressively it's like if you ask me it sounds 100 percent like they were going to stiff you for the wedding i don't believe for a minute her parents were paying for it she was using you and i can't believe your brother can't see the kind of person she is and then a uh, spicy ending to that <laughs> you didn't cancel the wedding you extricated yourself from an abusive and exploitive situation they're still free to marry on their own thin dime yep exactly you didn't cancel it you did great you did what you needed to do your boundaries came late but they came in strong all right and you, had, you were well within your rights to do that. Well, how's that for a fun sibling story? Let's go to the next one. Am I the a-hole for firing my brother after he proposed at my wedding? <laughs> okay, well, the consensus is not the a-hole, so let's dive into this one. People get very opinionated and spicy about others proposing at events. Um, we do something called unpopular wedding opinions over on Instagram. And this is a question that gets, you know, asked every once in a while or like tossed in there. Like, would you care if someone proposed at your wedding? Let me know in the comments down below. I feel like if it was the right person and they cleared it with me first, I'd be like, yes, go. Like that is fine by me. Shine queen. Yay. I'm so excited. But if it was just random and it was someone who was like not I was gonna say not important to me, but they're in my wedding. You know what I mean? Like it, it's for the right person, not for every person. And they'd have to clear it with me first. That's my personal take. Let me know yours in the comments below. So a bit of background. I own a plumbing company and hired my brother three years ago. He was jobless after the pandemic and I offered for him to come work for me. He was 22 at the time and is now looking to become a master plumber and start his own business. Wow, that's great. It takes a while to become a master plumber. Good for you. At my wedding, in which he was the best man, he decided that during his speech, he would give us all a big surprise and decided to propose to his longtime girlfriend. Me and my wife were appalled. We both felt like he stole the shine from our day. Everyone else in our families were so excited and kept taking pictures with her, looking at the ring, etc. I decided to fire him the very next day. He still doesn't understand why. He claims I'm being selfish and irrational and our parents agree. 
They're saying that the business should be separate from our personal lives, but I just can't overlook what he did and how he ruined our day. Am I overthinking this? Maybe? Okay. Okay, edit. I should have mentioned this, but he will be getting a severance. He's still my brother, and I wouldn't let him lose his home over this, but as a small business, I can't imagine seeing him every day at work. Not now, at least. Edit two, I reached out to him and we plan on speaking later today in person. Edit three, I love all the people who say you've been looking for a reason to fire him or you're just jealous. He was my best man. I never felt upset about him opening his own business. In fact, he has my complete blessing. This job was only supposed to be to get him on his feet again. I'm so happy he liked the field and wants to go further in it. There was no malice before this incident. Okay, so I'm going to give you my take on this before we read all of the responses to this because there seems to be a lot. And the general consensus is the OP was not the a-hole. However, I do feel like this was very poorly handled. Like, very, very, very poorly handled. If this is your favorite person, one of your favorite people in the entire world, the person that you chose to stand next to you on your wedding day, I mean, had he asked, would you have said no? Is the act, is that happening, did it really ruin your entire wedding day? Or did it just leave a stain on it that's hard to ignore? Because those are two very different things, right? Like a, a five minute part of your wedding, a very epic five minute part, right? Like a very huge part of your wedding, very attention grabbing, still didn't make it not your wedding. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think that this just sucks all around. I think that this is a hard one. I think that your reaction, uh, you feel justified in making that and you're within your rights to do that. I would not have made the same choice. I would have uh, talked to the person, would talk to my brother and been like, hey man, that hurt. Like congratulations, but it, it totally rained on my parade. It felt like you didn't care about our day and you stole the spotlight. And I didn't realize that that mattered to me until it happened. And I need to let you know that I'm mad at you. And I need to let you know that I'm frustrated with you. And I need to let you know that I'm angry. And that, that didn't sit well with me. And I, I don't know how to proceed working with you uh, every single day. So I kind of need some time for me, right? Like I need to be able to not see you every day. That's a different conversation than because you proposed at my wedding, you're fired. Because we're not actually getting to the root cause of all these issues. We're not actually digging down deep to be like, why am I upset? Why did this bother me? And am I articulating those feelings to this person? And am I sharing these feelings with this person? No, you just fired him. I mean, clearly you made a couple of edits to say that you're going to talk to him later, but you fired first and talked later. I think that we as a society could get a lot further if we talked first and fired later, right? Um, I know you should hire slowly and fire quickly, but when we're talking about family, whether you should or should not mix family and business, it doesn't matter you did in this situation. And I think that there are some things that you, uh, you can't take back, like proposing at your brother's wedding and firing your brother the next day. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in and read some of these responses. Not the a-hole. This case can't separate family and business because you only offer the job because he was family. I would tell him he can have the job back after he pays for half the reception since he turned it into a combination reception and engagement party. <laughs> no. That is nonsensical, okay? We can be mad, we can have our emotions about it, but we're not going to demand he pays $15,000, right? That's ludicrous. This is his favorite dude. This is his best man. This is the person he chose to stand next to him on his wedding day. That can feel like a big betrayal, but we're not going to charge him fifteen grand to get back into his good graces. That just makes things messier. And that's avoiding having a proper conversation about feelings and how we were affected by this, right? That is not how we're going to fix this at all. Agreed, he owes you an apology as well. How does he not see he made you and your wife's day about him? Not the a-hole, I hope you show him this post. Of course, an apology I do think in this situation is totally warranted. Maybe he didn't realize it would affect you so much. Maybe he thought you'd be excited, right? Like, he, maybe he just wasn't thinking about it, and he's like, everyone's gonna be there, it's gonna be epic, and he just wasn't thinking. I don't think he did it with malice. And I think you know this person well enough to know that he didn't do it with malice, right? So... What do we do with that? I'd answer to the parents, dear mother and father, if I can't trust my brother to behave decently at a very important personal event, how can I trust him in day-to-day -day work matters? His lack of brotherly propriety shows an un unacceptable flaw of character for the workplace. That is such a logical fallacy argument. That's okay. I, I, the more I'm reading these, these comments, I'm like, y'all need, okay. Okay. Um, he didn't behave indecently. He did something that hurt your feelings, right? He did something that stole the show. But that's not, you know, performing a risque dance and behaving indecently. And you do trust him at the workplace, right? He was a great worker. You said so yourself. I think we need to pour grace all over this whole situation. Just grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. I think that this is... Uh, I think that everyone sucks in this situation. <laughs> 
after spending a bit of time on Reddit, I wonder if there are people who have drama-free weddings and where they are hiding. Edit, yay for all the wedding drama-free people who showed up in the comments. <laughs> yeah, drama-free weddings happen all the time. Most of the ones we work have no drama at all whatsoever, so <laughs> take heart. <laughs> all right. Next sibling situation. Am I the a-hole for announcing my pregnancy at my sister's wedding? <laughs> it's like seeing it from the other side. But with a baby this time instead of a proposal. Okay, so uh, consensus is not the a-hole. This will be interesting. I'm 32, my sister is 28, and we've always been incredibly close. Point in case. Case in point? <laughs> she was the first person I told I was pregnant, besides my husband, of course. I told her essentially a week after I got a positive pregnancy test, which was about three months before her wedding. I told her I was going to tell our parents and my husband's parents around the 10-week mark, but she told me that I should hold off until her wedding in September. I'd be like four months along that point, so I wouldn't be showing really, and she thought it would be so special for her to be able to make an announcement about a special guest at her wedding, and it be her first niece or nephew and my parents' first grandbaby. I agreed, because it seemed like it meant a lot to her, and again, we were super close and I was happy to do that for her. Turns out, the first trimester was awful with morning sickness and exhaustion. I would have preferred to be able to talk about it with my mom, but I was willing to grin and bear it for my sister's wedding. Oh, oh... My mom, my mom found out I was pregnant with my fourth child before my husband did. <laughs> he wasn't home and I was weeping because we had experienced secondary infertility and we had tried for her for four and a half years and finding out I was pregnant, I just like lost it. I lost it. I'll go ahead and link the video right here if you want. It just, that baby is so precious to us because we waited so long for her. So to not have my mom to talk to for three months and have such terrible symptoms, no ma'am. I would call my sister up in a heartbeat and be like, I can't do this. Well, the wedding came along and about halfway through the night, I asked her when the announcement was happening. She told me that she changed her mind and that her wedding didn't seem like a good time or place to announce my pregnancy. I was obviously super upset since I went through a really awful first trimester with only my sister and husband to lean on. I decided I wasn't going to put the announcement on hold any longer just for her. So my husband and I pulled my parents aside and quietly told them and told them to keep it private for the evening. That's not an announcement. I know you use announcement. I think you use announcement in the title. That's not an announcement. That is, I can understand where you're coming from when you did this. You didn't have to. You could have done it later, but I understand where you're coming from. They were thrilled, lots of hugs, a few tears, but a very touching and private moment. Literally no one else found out until I announced it on Facebook a week later. My sister found out around the same time as my Facebook post when my dad mentioned how we told him about it. And she texted me, calling me the B word who made her wedding about myself, and she hasn't spoken to me since. I've messaged her and apologized probably a dozen times since then, but she refuses to talk to me, and now she refuses to come see her little nephew, who's almost a month old at this point. Wow, this is, this is a lot. My parents and partner think I did nothing wrong since she went back on her word and that I should just wait it out and she'll come around. I'm obviously unsure, as clearly this has made her so upset with me, and we were so close before. Am I the a-hole? Edit. I've seen a lot of comments saying that I was trying to be petty, mean, vindictive, spiteful, hurt my sister, etc. And I just want to address that really quickly. If I had been any of those things, I would have made sure she found out I had done it, you know? She just happened to find out a week later because my dad let it slip. I just desperately wanted to tell my mom, and after waiting over two months for my sister, it really felt like I couldn't wait another moment at the whims of someone who wasn't even involved in the pregnancy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I understand now, though, that I definitely should have not waited to tell my mom about the pregnancy. Hindsight is twenty twenty, and all that. Okay. My take on it before we launch into reading some of the comments. Uh, coming from someone who has had very emotional pregnancy experiences and my beloved relationship with my mom, I could not imagine waiting. I also have a sister whom I adore a whole lot. <laughs> I would still tell my mom. But had I made this agreement with my sister and had she gone back on that, I would have probably very frankly been like, hey, then I'm going to tell them. Now, I probably would have waited and not said it at the wedding. But I think OP is very well within her rights to be like, this was supposed to be the, the day that I told people, right? Like, this was supposed to be the day you were going to make this announcement. And I was going to give you the joy of announcing that. Because there's something joyous about telling someone that you are expecting. Especially when you've been wanting this. There's something joyous about sharing that with somebody. So to have give that gift to somebody else and be like, yes, you can be the person to announce that. And to hold in huge, massive symptoms like morning sickness. Which, by the way, if you haven't had a baby or haven't been around someone who's had a baby who had morning sickness, it's not the morning. Sometimes it's all day. Women can lose weight in the first trimester of their pregnancy if their morning sickness is too intense. So, you know, this is to go through soldiering that alone and not have anybody to talk to other than your sister and your husband. That's like, it's just a lot. It's a lot. I get it. I don't think you were the a-hole in this situation. I am so deeply saddened that your sister was like, I'm just not going to talk to you. <laughs> like she hasn't even met your kid 
because of this situation because you quietly told your parents on her wedding day sure you could have said it on a different day but that's not enough in my opinion to keep her from speaking with you and to keep her from meeting your your son and i'm so sorry that that's happening I think that this just speaks to uh, something a lot deeper. And if you choose to apologize, you can apologize for the timing of it, sure. But I also think maybe just a frank conversation when she's ready, because clearly she's like not ready to speak with you, right? That that might be the way to move forward with this. But at the same time, it sounds like she's got some stuff she's got to work through. Like a lot of stuff she's got to work through. Because unlike your title, you didn't make an announcement at her wedding. You privately told your parents about your baby. You could have done it the next day, right? You could have done it before. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, right? but you didn't. You guys, there's a lot of tension around weddings and a lot of expectations, and I know that this is a really difficult season for a lot of people. You just don't anticipate everyone having all these emotions around you, especially when it's people you've known your entire life, and you're like, what on earth? <laughs> um, and it could be your siblings, it could be your parents, it could be your old college roommate. They're, they're just as, there's a lot going on. I do highly recommend, if you missed that card link earlier, that I mentioned about the dark side of wedding planning, I'm gonna link it in the description box as well. Please take a look at that. Please watch that video. Know that you are not alone. There's some great resources in that and the whole idea of planning a wedding especially when you're trying to do it without a wedding planner or you know manipulating your <laughs> your future sister-in-law to plan it for you it's a lot and a lot of you can't afford a wedding planner let's be honest like we are expensive breed that's why I created the master plan so if you want a wedding planner for a fraction of the price literally it's just a monthly subscription you sign up you'll leave when you need to and I will tell you exactly how to plan your wedding in chronological order I'll give you a budget I'll give you a guest list spreadsheet that perfectly correlates with every single wedding website so you can just like transfer over the csv file i'm telling you the master plan has absolutely everything that you need to plan your wedding including live office hours with a wedding planner every single week so if you have any questions i got someone there to answer them for you so please if you're struggling with wedding planning it doesn't have to be difficult i'm here to help you plan easy and stress less you've got enough emotional stuff happening with family right so let me take some of that off your plate come join us in the master plan i would love to have you in there and let's just make this thing a smashing success because you deserve a stress-free wedding day if you guys like the aita videos good news more of them are coming so be sure to jump on down there ring that bell subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for a modern day bride and the occasional scathing aita and until next time bye guys